Are you constantly overwhelmed, wired, but tired and wondering why you're doing everything right but still feeling off? You're not alone and the truth is that chronic stress might be the reason. We can do all the things right. Take the supplements, eat the right foods, exercise, but today we're diving into why stress hits women harder, hormonally, neurologically, and metabolically, and how you can strategically reduce your stress to extend your life protect your hormones, and enhance your fertility and brain health. Let's get into it. First, we're gonna talk about why is stress different for women. Stress is not just an emotional response, it's a biological cascade, and for women, that cascade is more complex. We have a hormonal vulnerability, so when you're stressed, your body releases cortisol, a survival hormone. But for women, high cortisol continuously disrupts the delicate balance between estrogen and progesterone and thyroid hormones. This imbalance affects everything from your menstrual cycle, fertility, sleep, to fat storage, especially around the belly. Then we have neurological differences. So according to studies, women's brains have more active stress response circuits, meaning that we not only feel more stress intensely, but remember it longer and that stress often turns inward, fueling anxiety, insomnia, and even autoimmune flares. We also have the burnout gap. So a 2022 McKinsey report found that women are more likely to burn out than men, especially in their 30s and 40s. Why? Because we're juggling career, caretaking, perfectionism, and societal expectation, all while pushing your body into biological overdrive. There's also long-term consequences of this unmanaged stress. Left unchecked, chronic stress accelerates aging in women at the cellular, cognitive, and hormonal levels. Here's what the science shows, telomere shortening. Chronic stress can actually shrink the telomeres, the protective caps in our DNA. Shorter telomeres equals faster aging. Also estrogen depletion. Stress can deplete progesterone first and then estrogen, fueling PCOS, PMS, and mood swings. We also have neuroinflammation. Long-term stress can raise inflammatory cytokines, increasing the risk for Alzheimer's disease, especially in postmenopausal women. And then there's cortisol resistance. So over time, your cells will actually stop responding properly to cortisol, making fat loss, blood sugar control, and motivation more difficult. This isn't just about feeling better, it's about preventing disease, preserving your fertility, and protecting your brain. Now we're gonna talk about the top science-backed stress reduction tools for women. The solution isn't always just doing less, it's doing smarter stress recovery as well. Here are five female-focused strategies to reset your nervous system and protect your longevity. The first tool is daily nervous system regulation, also known as activating the parasympathetic system. You could be doing breath work or vagus nerve activation. Five to 10 minutes of slow diaphragmatic breathing, so an inhale of four and an exhale of six, or vagal nerve stimulation through humming or devices like pulsetto can actually work by activating the parasympathetic nervous system, lowering cortisol and improving hormone signaling. Tool number two can be female-centric adaptogens. So adaptogens like ashwagandha and rhodiola are great for hormonal balance and mood. Ashwagandha has been shown to lower cortisol levels by up to 30% in eight weeks. Of course, always talk to your doctor, especially if you're trying to conceive. Tool number three would be strategic exercise, not overtraining. If you already have high stress in your life and you're under eating and overtraining, it can be harmful. So if you feel overstressed, then you can do something slower like yoga or walking or dialing back some of that exercise. I don't think that you should automatically plan to downregulate your workouts, but if you're looking on your aura ring or some sort of wearable and your stress is super high, then we don't want to overtrain. Over training in a stress state spikes cortisol. Women in their 30s plus do great with resistance training, walking, and gentle cardio like zone two. And then we can also cycle sync our workouts for extra hormone support if you're in one of these really intensely stressful seasons. I have more on that um, on another video, so we'll link it below. Tool number four is mastering your blood sugar. Stress and glucose uh, and cortisol raise blood sugar, which leads to insulin resistance and mood crashes over time. Eating protein, fiber, and healthy fat at every meal can be really beneficial. If you're in a super stressed state, then not fasting aggressively can also be helpful. Consider magnesium, chromium, and berberine if your blood sugar is unstable. I also wear a Levels Dexcom to manage my blood sugar. Tool number five is sleep is therapy. Poor sleep leads to more cortisol, which equals more stress and then more poor sleep. So we have to break this cycle. By tracking your sleep quality, cutting out blue light, trying maybe magnesium glycinate or glycine or GABA to support deep sleep, if you're waking up wired at 2 a.m., your cortisol rhythms may have been flipped. So it's time to reset your circadian cues. Also getting morning sun is super helpful for this. 
So what can you do today? You don't need to overhaul your entire life, but you do need to start honoring your biology. Because the truth is women are not small men. We need different stress strategies and our longevity depends on it. Here's your homework. Tonight, black out all blue light before bed. Take six deep breaths. Eat a nourishing dinner early with protein and plants. And give yourself permission to just rest, not as a reward for productivity, but as a foundation for thriving and for the future of your longevity. If you found this video helpful, I'd love if you hit the like button and share this with the woman you love. You can also subscribe for weekly deep dives on female health, biohacking, longevity, and health optimization. I would also love it if you let me know in the comments what's one stress-relieving practice that you swear by or that you want to start.